I had a request from a couple of students to do an overview of the types of techniques that we've learned. So I think it's best to think about what our goals are. Um, and one of them was, a main one, is to purify protein from, from cells. cells. Now, you, when you purify protein from cells, there's a lot of stuff you can do with it. Um, the goal here, though, is that you acknowledge that there are so many proteins in any given cell, and you want to make sure that you have a sample that's just going to be your protein and nothing else. And then you could take that and maybe you could um, take a little bit to crystallize and do x-ray crystallography. Maybe you're going to take a little bit of it and do other experiments where you look at how the protein binds DNA or how the protein can catalyze a reaction or whatever other downstream uh, experiments that you want to do. But to study a protein, you have to make sure that you have a sample that's pure, that's just your protein of interest. So how do we get there? So I don't want to just repeat lecture, so I'm going to just put a bunch of arrows to say I'm skipping these parts. What you end up getting, um, where I'm going to lead you to, is where you have a, a crude extract, which is lots of proteins, but all of the proteins. So it's a mix of a lot of different proteins, and what you want to do is purify a sample of just your protein. And in order to do that, you do sequential steps. And your steps will be um, for purification. They'll either be the ones we talked about, chromatography, Or you take advantage of solubility differences and you do, you cause precipitation. So something that was confusing for students was the distinction between an experiment you would do for purification versus something that you would just do for detection during protein purification. So this would be like column chromatography. We talked about a couple different kinds. Um, using precipitation, or sorry, using uh, salt or pH differences to cause something to precipitate. Some proteins precipitate while others stay in solution. Now you're separating them. Now after every step, You can run a gel you can run an SDS page gel and if you know how big your protein is it's a possible way that you can track your protein in class I talked about a different way of tracking your protein by um, if you have the benefit of testing for activity because your protein is an enzyme, you can track the presence of your protein by tracking enzyme activity. So you're tracking your protein by measuring enzyme activity. So purification lets you have um, a large yield that comes off of a column or if you do precipitation, then you're working with a beaker or a flask and you're adding a certain amount of salt or changing the pH to cause some proteins to precipitate and others to stay in solution. Now detection, you're always just dealing with a gel and so 
you load, like I said in class, a very small amount, like 20 microliters, and then you get bands in the gel, or if it's um, 2D gel electrophoresis or isoelectric focusing, it's still, you know, you get these dots on a the gel. They don't represent very much protein. You can't take that gel and do much more with it. Whereas you run a column, you get a good volume off of that column and you can take that to another step of purification or you can test enzyme activity from it. There's enough volume there where you can take a little piece, sorry, I shouldn't say piece, you can take an aliquot and run an SCS page gel. Then you take another aliquot and you can do an enzyme assay. The rest you can then pour into the next purification step in your scheme. And so this purification de and versus detection is all within the context of purifying your protein from a mixture. So in real life, we use 2D gels or SDS page gels for a lot of different reasons. One student really nicely commented on Piazza, sometimes you run an SDS page gel by seeing what's the different proteins that are being expressed in different tissues. So this is, a gel allows you to, to detect the presence of proteins, but it doesn't allow you to isolate enough to do anything with them. Now, once you have a pure sample of just your protein, as I mentioned, there's a lot of things you can do with it. One of the things you can do is you could use it for x-ray crystallography. And this is to figure out the structure. You can also take a sample of your protein that's pure and sequence it. And we talked about Sanger and Edmund degradation. And then I also mentioned that more modern, um, more modern times we use mass spec. And not to confuse things too deeply, but actually mass spec is so sensitive that you could use the protein out of a gel. But let's keep it simple for now and just talk about this distinction of purification versus detection. So you can sequence using Edmund or Sanger degradation, and this tells you, we'll keep it the same, you figure out the amino acid sequence. If your protein is bigger than 40 amino acids, the experiment that you do before Sanger or Edmund is amino acid composition analysis. And I talked about this in an earlier lecture. I believe it was lecture 10. And this allows you to see how, what are the amino acids in your protein. So this was um, done with ion exchange chromatography. And it actually had a detection system attached to it in the form of a spectrophotometer. So different experiments that you can do with your pure sample and things that you would do for different reasons. Hopefully this cleared up um, some of the distinctions in talking about them all at once 
can help you have like a more holistic idea of where all these techniques fit into each other.